really part two to the last video because you guys have come up with some super interesting ideas that we want to play with today. If you haven't seen the last video, these are samples that I used the laser to engrave a pattern in, put powder in on this one, and then forge welded together to get this like high degree of precision Damascus steel or pattern weld steel. This one was the laser etch one, which kind of the general conclusion is, Tim, that's a little bit less interesting, arguably lame. I can get behind this process of forge welding this in, but I'm actually not here to play with that today. What we're gonna play with is actually not my idea. It comes with a YouTube channel, Ami, about doing a positive negative of the two different steels and welding it together versus using the powder. And I thought, man, that's a super good idea. So we're gonna try that today. But also, at the end of this video, I'm gonna try, this comes from the comment section, thank you, forge this and see what happens to the pattern. So we're gonna try two different things today. I'm excited, thank you for being here, I appreciate it. Let's get into it. sure I have a piece of 1084 in here somewhere. All right, we got some options here. Life is awesome. Okay, so these are my options. Okay, let's take these to the laser. Set up and we'll see if it's gonna be too fine of a pattern. It's gonna be very fine. Just finishing up here, and this has now been running for uh, about eight and a half hours. It's coming very cool. Right now, it should be done. So right now we're setting up to do the negative side or the other side of it. See how this goes. have to go do, I'm gonna just, oh no, it won't fit because of these little, I'm just gonna quickly uh, take off the edge here. A Little bit of extra material then we're gonna see if this thing will fit in. We've got it filed up. We're gonna see if it's gonna fit in now. That definitely is not gonna fit. It definitely does not fit. That's the spot where it like feels the best. I'm gonna try to maybe open it up just a little more with the laser, I think. And then maybe just use the press to press it together cold. I don't know. Let's keep going though. So I've opened the pattern up quite a bit more. I shouldn't say quite a bit more, but it's taken a long time. So you can see it still doesn't like pop in. So I'm wondering if I can now just use the fly press and just push it in. It totally might not work, but if it would work, it'd be perfect. So let's give this thing a squish and see if this works. We could literally uh, lose it all right here. So that one's 65 thousandths of an inch deep. That one's 81. I feel like that maybe did not go very good. Okay, comes out no problem. Very little issues with the pattern being deformed. You can see a couple spots where it did bottom out. I think I'm gonna keep going because when I weld it, it's just gonna fuse together and mush. Maybe that would add a little bit of distortion to the pattern, but it's gonna be very minimal. You can see on this side, like that's the gap I'm talking about. 
so it's not that much. There's a couple spots where the laser spilled over the edge, so it looks like it's more. But man, I, I think it's gonna work, guys. Talking about today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. If you're looking to build a website, head over to Squarespace. Com. Squarespace is uh, utilizing AI to help you create your perfectly tailored website. Squarespace also is taking on Squarespace payments and so now they are processing all the money stuff. So if you gotta sell something, uh, you can do it all through their native platform, Squarespace. If you need a domain name, get it at Squarespace. Whatever kind of website you need, check it out. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. And the handle fell off and I burned it and I burned it bad. Really hard to film and do this work because you cannot take your eyes off that thing. <sighs> For the experiment it'll still be mediocre because I didn't lose too much around here. But uh, that's uh, it's just not acceptable Tim. Let's get this piece uh, in the forge here. And we'll see what we, when we flatten it down, what it looks like, you know? Brutal. <laughs> My thought is to grind off the 15 and 20. And so we'll get down to this and then we'll etch. Check it out. We got some pattern coming out. It's awesome. It's looking good. So I just got the uh, first set of the 1900 Blackhawk axes getting ready to go out here. I wanted to show you a couple things because it's been a while since I updated on these guys. Oh, that is so heavy. First thing to note, check out the new logo on these bad boys. I, uh, I don't know, I just felt like trying it out and, and uh, I think it looks really cool. I don't know if that's gonna carry over to the Blackhawk hatchets or not, uh, but the axe has got the, the new logo on it. 
So it used to be a T on this side. Now it's got the Timothy D and Co in there. And what I've done is I've added quite a bit of tail on the end. Makes it feel a little better in here, but it also makes it a little heavier. So now this is at about four and a half pounds. Sharpening jig. Whoo, that's working so good. I love that thing. I'll have to show you an update on that, change some stuff, but anyways, that's a Blackhawk axe. Oh no, wait, you gotta check this out. You gotta check this out. Check out how the Blackhawk logo looks on the axe box. I think it looks even better than the hatchet box. Look how cool that is. Anyways, thank you to all who've placed an order. I'm gonna do four more axes before the end of the year. So if you want to get it on a pre-order, hit the website, it's four more, and then that's going to be it for the year on the axis. I'm going to do a couple more hatchets yet. Very interesting place we are at right here. Let me show you before we stick it in the ferric chloride here to etch it. Let me show you what this looks like. I think disappointing that those cracks are in there. It didn't weld up fully or I haven't grounded down far enough. I've grounded down far enough that I'm worried about going too far. If I had a milling machine or even better, a surface grinder, it would be a lot easier to do this, but we don't have that, so we're just doing with what we got. Yeah, I think it's not welded up. Well, let's stick it in the etch, see how it looks. I don't think I'm gonna pursue polishing these up really far because my thought is we just need to know which one we wanna run with then I want to put it into a project. Here we go. Let's see what this looks like. Anything? Oh yeah. A little something, something happened in there. So take a look at this. This is so cool. I did put it in coffee, but I didn't bring it up to a fine grit sandpaper. So it's pretty rough. The contrast isn't crazy, but good enough to see what's going on. It looks like there's very little distortion. It does look cool. It's just full of these cold shuts or not welded parts. We're just gonna spend a couple minutes here and quickly grind this thing, see if those cold shuts come out or if that's just the way it is. So you can tell that it's not welded fully because as I've kept grinding, it's gotten, I would say, worse. That's a little bit disappointing, you know? This other one, that we did the other day with the powder. Now this is actually very interesting. If you remember, it was so dirty and grainy in the, uh, the 1090, the powder, but now for whatever reason, it actually looks a lot cleaner, a lot cleaner. Like I would like to go back to maybe pursuing this now that we've learned more about everything. The conclusion of this video, this didn't work. I wouldn't write it off but I wanna try now making a project. I wanna try actually making a knife with some sort of pattern and the powder. So I think that's the next step. If you haven't subscribed to the channel and you like this video, this kind of content, it would mean the world to me if you would consider subscribing. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Till then, keep the forge lit.